lovely people welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've just joined us my name is Sunel and today I thought I would do a video all about probably one of my favourite castles to visit it is very very old very very beautiful and incredibly haunted I'm of course talking about St Breville's Castle on the border of Wales now I'm not going to go into all the stories that the castle has just for the very basic fact of if I were to do that we would be here all night so I thought I would do a few of the possibly more well-known um, experiences that people have had there as well as a couple of my own interesting experiences that I've had whilst visiting there over the years so as always grab a drink dim the lights and let's get into it <laughs> St Breville's Castle was built somewhere between 1075 and 1129 and it's been a number of different things over the years. Um, it started off as a royal hunting lodge, uh, became an administrative centre, um, a coral and arms manufacture camp. Uh, because it was right in the middle of the Forest of Dean, it was seen as the perfect place for supplies for weaponry. Um, it's also been a prison and in more recent years a youth centre or, or, or um, a youth hostel and people can actually still go and stay there. Um, it's perfect for you know um, uh, people who are on a travelling holiday, uh, backpackers, hikers or just generally, you know, people who want to spend a weekend in a castle because why wouldn't you? <laughs> um, and then of course there are the ghosts. So starting with East Tower, I find this quite an interesting area of the castle because a lot of the activity around that particular part tends to centre a lot on the stairs and on a corridor. Um, quite often guests who are staying in that particular area will report hearing the sound of uh, footsteps and uh, children's laughter and running up and down and this will go on until pretty late on at night and obviously keep them awake and they'll go to complain about it to management the next day and they'll be told quite often that not only are there no children staying in the east tower at that time there's actually no children staying in the castle at all which spooks them out quite a bit which I can fully understand why <laughs> um, they also seem to be quite mischievous and enjoy turning the taps and the bathroom on and off a lot as well as the showers so I don't know maybe uh, maybe the ghosts like uh, hygiene and cleanliness as much as we do Cleanliness is uh, next to godliness, as they say. Our next stop on our haunted adventure of St. Breville's is the Oubliette Room. Now, Oubliette is taken from the French word oublier, which is to forget, which is exactly what happened to the unfortunate people who were taken to this room. Now, these days, if you go into the oubliette room, you'll find a rug in the middle of the floor. Lift that up and beneath that you'll find a trap door. Pick that up and you will find the final resting place of many an unfortunate soul. Um, these pits were very deep and you would be pushed down there and 
if you were unlucky enough not to break your neck instantly you would slowly and surely starve to death down there um like the name suggests you'd be quite literally forgotten about and it's in this room that has a particular spirit who likes to cause trouble um there is a bed by one of the windows where you'll find that quite often if you try sleeping in that bed you'll find the covers ripped off of you in the middle of the night by unseen hands um there are balls of light having reported being seen coming from the trapdoor of the oubliette um and quite disturbing as well is the sound of a woman screaming now whether that is of a spiritual nature or whether a fox or some manner of animal outside um who can say for sure but either way it's a pretty creepy thing to encounter Crossing now into the other tower, um, if you climb the stairs to the top, you'll find two rooms connected to each other, the hanging room and the guard room. And both of these have quite interesting entities, I think. Um, the hanging room, well, what happened there is exactly what it sounds like. Um, apparently people were hanged outside of the window of that particular room as a warning to others. And people staying there in recent years have reported various um, experiences such as not being able to breathe properly, um, as being like they're being choked. Um, they've had like um what sounds like marbles or coins being rolled across the floor uh footsteps and there's one particular entity that people have seen and that's one of a woman who crosses the floor to the middle of the room bends down puts her hands together as if in prayer before standing again and moving towards the window of the room um and then simply disappearing and i find that the more people have like the same kind of experiences with things like that especially seeing full-on apparitions the more kind of credence is given to it i think um especially people who like have no connection to each other at all um yeah i find that a rather interesting uh story it's not something that i've experienced before um i've stayed in that room myself um but you know not everyone always encounters the same thing as everyone else staying there so who knows maybe i will uh at some point in the adjoining room um there's apparently a dark entity that can often be seen kind of stood in the doorway between the two rooms um and he uh, I, mean, I say he uh because apparently that's like the kind of feeling that people get when they uh encounter this particular entity um but they often see him it when they look in the mirror in the room as well um and he tends to be quite an intimidating figure um 
as and uh, yeah, uh, people also have reported feeling like their sensation of being pushed. And yeah, um, if they look into the mirror sometimes, then they will quite often see their faces change. And what's interesting is that it's always the same, like, a description of when people experience this particular um, encounter is that it's always the one face that they see so they look into the darkened mirror um, their face will change but it'll always be the same one um, and with every kind of description that different people give after doing this, it's always the same um, description that they give, no matter who does it, which I find totally bizarre because obviously if you do that kind of experiment, you know, in the scientific manner obviously people's faces change in the darkened mirror due to like uh, brain waves and brain chemistry but for each person to do it and come back with exactly, exactly the same description of the same face that their face apparently changes into yeah, that, that's quite a creepy thing, I think. I've actually had a rather interesting experience while staying in the, um, the guard room. Um, so it was about one o'clock in the morning. I'd gone to bed after spending the evening with, with the friends who I'd gone there with. And I was lying in bed for about probably 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that, just trying to get to sleep. And I heard footsteps of someone coming up the tower stairs towards the room. And because you know, the rooms are all like dormitory style and we're all sharing with everyone else, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, you know, oh, it's just, you know, someone who I'm sharing the room with coming up to bed themselves. And so I'm laying there and I'm hearing these footsteps climbing the stairs and they get to the door of the room and they stop. And I'm lying there waiting for them to, you know, open the door to come in. It doesn't and i'm thinking well okay maybe it was someone who you know kind of got their room wrong and you know so they're gonna you know turn around in a minute and walk back downstairs to whatever room they're gonna be in and that didn't happen either and now these stairs they are very old, very creaky, um, and the footsteps were loud, like really, really loud, as in like wearing big stompy boots kind of loud. You couldn't miss it. Um, and yeah, like I said, there, the staircase is really like creaky and groany. And I mean, I can't even move up and down the stairs quietly in like slippers or in the socks. You know, I've tried <laughs> some experiments and it just doesn't happen. Uh, you know, they still creak and groan and God knows what else. And so, yeah, they went up and they didn't go back down. And it was not actually until the other day when I was doing research for this video um, and 
I was looking at an ebook about all the different um, like special encounters that people have had at Axon Revels and yeah apparently it's uh, it's quite a common occurrence to hear footsteps moving up and down the stairs when there's no one actually there so yeah uh, it looks like um, I may well have uh, had a bit of a ghosty encounter last time I was there which is really rather cool so moving down the stairs a little way you'll find the prison room which is again exactly what it sounds like it was the castle prison and what's really cool about this room is the fact that if you look on the walls there's still graffiti on them done by prisoners way 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 back in the day um and it's honestly quite chilling some of them as well like some of the messages that they've left behind um and you can also still see um like where they had the shackles that they would have trained people to um and yeah it's a rather creepy looking room um and again people have heard things like um like footsteps moving around um occasionally furniture will be moved by itself um people hear like whispers and things like that coming from the prison or indeed from the um hanging guard room above and they'll go upstairs or downstairs depending on where they are in the tower and there'll be no one there so yeah um obviously the uh prisoners who were kept there they will still be there now the last area of the castle i'll be talking about in the video is uh king john's lounge and it's in here and in some of the rooms around the lounge area is where the sound of a baby can be heard crying and this has been heard by both staff and guests staying at the castle um and you know people mention it in passing to you know other guests or staff like you know oh i hear the uh, uh the uh, the baby kept you up last night and they'll kind of like look at them and, and say but we don't have a baby with us um and this kind of phenomenon has been going on for years and i think what really gives credence to this particular story is the fact that a few years ago uh, while there was maintenance work or like renovations going on at the castle um workmen actually found the body of a baby wrapped in cloth in the uh fireplace in king john's lounge um the child was given a proper burial uh but occasionally can still be heard to this day um and there's a couple of different variations of the story um one story is that um the wife of a lord had a affair while the husband was away and when he returned he killed the baby and stuffed it up into the um the chimney um another story is the fact that many years ago um in order to stop evil spirits from entering a place by the chimney a baby would be placed up there and it was believed that the purity of the baby's soul would like scare the evil spirits away so regardless depends so you know regardless of which 
story you choose to believe um it's still a pretty gory one um and yeah um it's just a shame i think that the baby can still be heard to this day because it's obviously it's soul distance at peace even after the proper funeral it was given another interesting thing about this particular far place is that if you look at it very closely um you'll find that along the edge of one of the sides of it there are a lot of little like grooves cut into the stone and it is said that each groove represents someone who's been executed at the castle i actually had another interesting um experience in King John's Lounge last time I was there. Um, one evening I was sat with a friend chatting at the table um, and both he and I suddenly felt as we were talking the feeling that either we were having like small stones thrown at us and like bouncing off of us or we're being like poked a lot and you know we're we're looking around and you know first of all we're thinking you know okay maybe like you know there's someone like throwing things at us um but we couldn't see anything like lying around us that could have been thrown and no one else is paying any attention whatsoever they were all off doing their own thing um but yeah it just felt like you know we were being constantly like poked or prodded or you know something the, there was something like interfering in our conversation and both of us felt that and you know to this day we can't explain it because like i said there wasn't anything like around us on the floor or anything to suggest that people were like throwing things at us and uh, like it would have been only very small like kind of like that kind of thing um so again like i said you know like small stones or pebbles or something um but yeah we couldn't find anything um when we asked people they didn't know what we were talking about so i don't know maybe we had uh, someone else trying to join into our conversation that we just couldn't see who knows um but yeah um i absolutely love it there in all honesty um i can't wait to go back um like i said it's a youth hostel these days so you can go and stay there and you know not have to pay very much for it and they do all manner of events and stuff uh throughout the year uh they do various like um like outdoor plays and a medieval banquets where you can get all dressed up and archery and all kinds of stuff like that and yeah it's just a really beautiful place to go and visit um if you do visit there though just bear in mind that uh you may not necessarily be sharing the space with just your fellow you know travelers and backpackers um i hope you enjoyed this video um if you did then give it a thumbs up and like and comment and if you really enjoyed it then go and subscribe um and i will see you all in the next video until then stay safe and sweet dreams <laughs>